graders, we are going to dive in and get going on another chapter of the invention of Hugo Cabre. Um, we are on chapter 11 called Stolen Goods. Hugo darted through the crowd, his vision blurry from tears, and made his way into the walls of the station. He hurried to his room, shut the door behind him, and lit some candles. Anxiously, he headed for the boxes that were piled zoom in here just a little bit, um, that were piled near the wall and pulled out the mechanical man. Hugo had indeed been busy in the last week. He had finally repaired all of the mechanical man's broken pieces and painstakingly loosened what was too rusty to move. He had sewed a new outfit and oiled and polished its mechanisms. The mechanical man was finally holding a brand new handmade pen with a specially cut metal nib. Hugo moved a candle closer to him. In the middle of the mechanical man's back was a heart-shaped hole outlined in silver. Since leaving the toy booth moments ago, Hugo's left hand had been clenched into a tight fist, which now he slowly opened like a flower. There's a simile, he slowly opened his hand like a flower. Hugo glanced over at the book that was sitting by his bed, Practical Manual of Card Magic and Illusions. He had been studying the book very closely and had learned how to do just about every trick the book, uh, every trick it talked about. He found that he was quite good at them. With the proper instruction, <clears throat> his talent for machines translated perfectly to magic tricks. Hugo had come to understand the connection between horology, remember making clocks, and magic that his father had talked about. It wasn't just the understanding of machinery, it was the dexterity, the talent with his fingers themselves, as if they automatically knew what to do. Hugo's fingers were capable of the most surprising things. He had discovered that he could make cards float and he could turn marbles into mice and he could rip up a piece of paper and make it whole again. But most important, he found that with a hug goodbye, he could make Isabel's necklace disappear without her feeling a thing. All right, and this is called The Message. Probably my favorite chapter in the whole book. Hugo's hands were shaking. He had managed to finish fixing the mechanical man. The only thing he had needed was the key. The original key had been lost in the fire and all the other keys he found around the station and in the wind up toys from the booth didn't fit. But when he saw the key around Isabel's neck, he knew right away it would work. And now he had it. He had uh, he put the key in the heart-shaped hole in the middle of the mechanical man's back. He had been right. It fit perfectly. Hugo's mind raced. At, the, um, at last, the time had come for him to get the message he had been waiting for. But just as Hugo began to turn the key, he heard his door rattle. Before he could cover the mechanical man, the door burst open. Hugo didn't have time to scream as a dark figure lunged at him, knocking him to the ground and landed on top of him. His head banged painfully against the floorboards. You stole my key. What are you doing here? You aren't supposed to be here, Hugo yelled. Why would you steal my key after I helped you? I got your notebook back for you. I... Uh, sorry, I think I read that wrong. I got your notebook for you. I was going to give it to you. I just wanted you to promise to tell me about it. I should burn your notebook myself. Get out of here, Hugo hissed into Isabel's face. You're ruining everything. Get off of me. Using all his strength, he pushed her off and forced, his, and forced her toward the door, trying to get her out. But Isabel fought back. Soon, she had pushed Hugo back down to the floor and was using her knees to keep him there. He yelped in pain and, grab, and she grabbed his wrists and pinned his arms on the floor. They were both breathing heavily. What is this place? She said. Who are you? The candlelight was reflecting 
reflected brightly in her face, in her fierce black eyes. It's a secret. I can't tell you anything. It's not a secret anymore. I'm here. Now tell me what this place is. She jabbed him with her knees, which hurt. This is where I live. Hugo spat back at her. Isabel didn't budge. Isn't that what you wanted to know? Well, now you know. Quietly, Isabel said, why should I believe you? You're a liar and a thief. Where is my key? In the candlelight, Isabel hadn't yet seen the mechanical man sitting nearby. Hugo struggled beneath her, but it was no use. Isabel looked around for the first time. Finally, she saw it. She slipped off Hugo so she could get closer to the automaton, but she kept hold of one of Hugo's wrists. That's what was drawn in your notebook. She looked back to Hugo. What's going on? The imaginary gears in Hugo's head began to turn. My father made it before he died, Hugo lied. Why would my key fit into your father's machine? That doesn't make any sense. Hugo hadn't thought of that. I don't know, he said. I just knew your key would fit perfectly when I saw it. So you stole it, said Isabel. I didn't know how else to get it, Hugo said. You could have asked. Isabel wiped her hair away from her face with her one free hand. What happens when you wind it up, she asked. I don't know. I've never had a key before. Well, don't just sit there, she said to him. Turn it. No, said Hugo. What do you mean, no? I, I want to be by myself when I turn it. Isabel looked at Hugo. She was clearly still angry. Letting go of his wrist, she pushed him back, grasped the end of the key, and turned it several times herself. Hugo yelled out, but it was too late. It needs ink, he said. He quickly opened a bottle nearby and put a few drops into the tiny bottle in the automaton's hand. The children watched as the clockwork gears and levers inside the man began to engage. They whirled and turned and spun. Hugo's heart raced. He didn't care anymore that Isabel was sitting next to him. It didn't matter at all. The only thing that mattered now was the message. All right, so here they are watching. A cascade of perfect movements with hundreds of brilliantly calibrated actions coursed through the mechanical man. The key tightened a spring connected to a series of gears that extend, extended down into the base of the figure. There, the last gear turned a series of brass discs with precisely cut edges. Two little hammer-like contraptions came down and trailed along the edge of the notched discs, raising and falling as the discs steadily turned. The actions set in motion by the little hammers were then translated back up through a series of rods that led into the man's torso. There, the moving rod silently turned other mechanisms in the shoulder and the neck. The shoulder affected the elbow, and as the elbow engaged, it sent other movements in a chain reaction down into the wrist and finally the hand. Hugo and Isabel watched wide-eyed in wonder as very cautiously the, mi the man's miniature hand began to move. Isabel and Hugo held their breath. The mechanical man dipped the pen into the ink and began to write great time to make a prediction. You can see the key in the back here. Hmm. The children tried desperately to read it, but there were no letters, no words, no sentences, just random disconnected markings. The mechanical man wasn't writing anything. Hugo almost took the pen out of its hand because he was so upset. The automaton was not fixed. There must have been something Hugo had missed. He had failed. Give me my notebook, Hugo said furiously to Isabel. Isabel, stunned by his intensity, reached into her pocket and handed it to him. He quickly grabbed the notebook out of her hands and did what he had wanted to do for a long time. Feverishly, he checked his work against his father's drawings. He had done everything right. It should be working. 
Suddenly, Hugo felt stupid for thinking he could fix it, and especially for imagining there would be a letter from his father one waiting for him. All his work had been for nothing. Hugo felt broken himself. He stalked off to a dark corner of the room, put the notebook down on a shelf, and buried his head in his hands. But the mechanical man didn't stop what it was doing. It kept dipping the pen into the ink and making more scratches on the paper. Isabel stayed where she was, watching as these markings accumulated on the page, one after the other. The mechanical man's movements were so lifelike that its head even turned toward the inkwell as it dipped the pen for more ink. And then something incredible happened. Isabel gasped. Hugo turned to look at, at her and then ran over. He saw it immediately. The mechanical man hadn't just been scribbling. The lines were coming together, like something in the distance moving into focus. The mechanical man hadn't been writing. It was drawing. It created an image that Hugo recognized immediately. Shivers ran down his spine. Are you ready? Hmm. Does this seem familiar? At another part in the book, there was talk about a rocket shooting into the eye of the man in the moon. If you remember, Hugo talked about a movie that his dad had seen where a rocket flew into the eye of the man in the moon. So that's an interesting connection to a earlier chapter. Okay, it says that brings us to the end of this uh, that brings us to the end of the story. Now you know how the mysterious drawing I mentioned at the beginning of this book came to be discovered. It had been hidden inside the clockworks of a well-loved machine, waiting to be released by the turn of a stolen key. Here, the curtain closes and we can fade to black. But another story begins. Because stories lead to other stories, and this one leads all the way to the moon. And we will pick up next time reading part two. So exciting. Ah, I can't get my mouse to come down here. There we go. Thanks for listening, guys.